Welcome to the MedGen webinar series hosted by the Medical Genomics Program at the University of Toronto. This video has been designed by Anjali, Harpreet and Victoria. Harpreet and I will be your narrators for part 2. Today our topic is Optical Genome Mapping, Past, Present and Future. In part two of our webinar, we will talk about optical genome mapping as the next generation cytogenomic tool, the latest research, and details about the future of this technique. If you want to learn more about the history of optical genome mapping and how this technique works, check out our first video by Victoria. So Harpreet, can optical genome mapping have a place in the current clinical diagnostic setting? I'm glad you asked Anjali because at present cytogenetic analysis is invaluable in delineating chromosomal abnormalities that are both constitutional meaning present from birth as well as acquired such as those seen in cancer. The current gold standard for cytogenetics encapsulates a combination of karyotyping, chromosomal microarray analysis and fluorescent in situ hybridization with augmenting techniques like single nucleotide polymorphism array and multiplex ligation dependent probe amplification. However, optical genome mapping has shown promise in the investigation of structural variation in postnatal genetic disorders and hematological malignancies. Results of this new technique are currently being compared to the gold standard regimen of cytogenetics. This is because optical genome mapping has some advantages. It is a single technology that can detect numerous large genomic variations, whereas the current gold standard requires the use of several different technologies. Due to this, optical genome mapping can cut back on the time it takes to analyze and detect genomic variation. And it may be able to more precisely identify genomic variation which is accessible as well as inaccessible to standard techniques. The second reason is unlike the gold standard techniques which each return reports in their own different formats, optical genome mapping returns a genomic report in the form of an interactive circus plot which can make the visualization of individual as well as overlapping and interacting variation far easier. Oh wow, that's incredible. But Harpreet, I have another question. When we have sequencing technologies, both short read and long read ones, why would one prefer optical genome mapping? That's a really great question, Anjali. Here's a graph showing the read length captured by different high throughput techniques. The small insert size associated with short read sequencing fails to capture details about structural variants that are kilobases to megabases in length. Although long read sequencing technologies are being increasingly employed in characterizing structural variation, their low throughput and high costs discourage widespread adoption. Optical mapping can read single molecules with an average length of 300 kilobases. While this is possible with long read sequencing as well, with optical mapping, there's a definite cost advantage. Let me put this in perspective. 200x genome coverage costs about $500 for optical genome mapping when compared to $10,000 or $20,000 for whole genome sequencing with long read technologies. You've told me so many exciting things about optical genome mapping. But is there evidence for the utility of this technique in comparison to the current gold standard? Spoken like a true scientist, Anjali. So let's investigate how optical genome mapping actually performs. So there's been one single published study that has compared the validity of optical genome mapping for detection of constitutional abnormalities. 85 cases with 99 aberrations were detected by karyotyping, fish, 
and chromosomal microarray and then the same cases were analyzed by optical genome mapping. There was 100% concordance when identifying simple aberrations and superior detection for delineating complex anomalies. When it comes to validating optical genome mapping for acquired abnormalities in cancer, especially hematological malignancies, six studies have compared its detection rate when it comes to numerical and structural variants with cytogenetic analysis. Together, these studies have included around 100 cases. Optical genome mapping was found to be superior to well-established techniques for resolution of more complex translocations. It also had a higher sensitivity for detection of copy number alterations. Additionally, optical genome mapping was able to detect new and unknown gene fusions. Overall, six of the seven studies showed close to 100% concordance between conventional cytogenetics and optical genome mapping. However, these studies also brought to light the limitations that need to be addressed in order to qualify optical genome mapping for clinical applications. In more than one study, structural variations of the telomeric segments and repetitive loci for some chromosomes was missed, leading to false negative results. Furthermore, a high-throughput technique like optical genome mapping is unable to investigate sample contamination or mix-up. Finally, optical genome mapping performs poorly with fixed stored samples used for cytogenetics and requires either fresh or frozen tissue with intact high molecular weight DNA. These limitations can be addressed to advance this technique to the clinic. Anshli, did you know that optical genome mapping can also be used for detecting some repeat paste disorders? Oh really? That's so fascinating. Tell me more. Disorders such as Fragile X, Amyotropic Lateral Sclerosis that is ALS, and Myotonic Dystrophy are caused by the expansion of certain triplet, tetra, penta, and hexanucleotide sequences, some of which can expand for thousands of base pairs. Accurately detecting and measuring these repeat expansions is difficult because long tandem repeat measurements is unmanageable by molecular methods and too small to be detected by cytogenetic methods. Optical genome mapping can effectively size repeat expansions that are at least 500 base pairs and up to 100 kilo base pairs in size. So Anjali, Based off our discussion, let me ask you this question. Do you think optical genome mapping is ready to be implemented as a diagnostic test in the clinic? Do you think the answer to that is absolutely because the validation is great? Or maybe not right now and you're not too sure about it? Or not at all because there are other ways like sequencing much better at giving us data. To our viewers, you're welcome to pause the video if you need more time to think about this question. I'm not sure how our viewers feel, but I would go with option B. In my opinion, the number of validation studies are very few at this time, and we need more data to be able to confirm optical genome mapping's validity. Well said, I agree with you. We are at the stage where we need more information to be able to confirm the validity of this technique. Let's wrap up our webinar by looking at the direction this new technology is headed. While there is scope for refining optical genome mapping based on the limitations identified, there is always room for incorporating additional label chemistries. And right now, it is with the use of CRISPR-Cas9. Combining Cas9-mediated target-specific labeling with optical genome mapping will add precision not only to breakpoint detection, but also copy number detection for genomic repeats, which are difficult to resolve by sequencing strategies. With this, we conclude our two-part webinar series on the past, present, and future of optical genome mapping. Thank you so much for watching. We hope that you found this useful and now have a good understanding about the scope of optical genome mapping. 
If you want to learn more about the history of this technique and how it works, check out our first video.